Newton's inverse square rule. Newton's inverse square rule is the basis for universal law of gravitation conceptualized by Newton. And the first part of the universal law of gravitation talks about gravitational force being proportional to the product of masses. That is always the gravitational force is between two objects and the product of the two objects masses. Now the second part of it calls of the gravitational force being inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two objects. In Newton's universal law of gravitation, the force between two bodies is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. This is called Newton's inverse square rule. Hence, F is proportional to 1 by d square or 1 by r square. Some people say d, some people say r, where r or d is the distance between the two objects. And the assumption Newton made over here is it goes in a circular orbit. And he also used the Kepler's third law of planetary motion to arrive at this above inverse square rule. So Kepler established three laws of motion which we will be dealt with later on. Because the Kepler in his uh, first law said that in the planetary motion, the planets basically move in an elliptical orbit, not in a circular orbit. Whereas the Newton in the arriving at universal law of gravitation and this inverse square rule, he made an assumption that the bodies are in circular motion. Let us take the sun and earth as the planet or any other planet moving in circular orbit around the sun and there is a gravitational force that is exerted the force between these two bodies the sun and the planet and the planet is moving with a velocity v as is given and the distance between the center of the sun and center of the planet is r and we see that for the planet to be in a circular orbit, there is a centripetal force that is working on the planet from the center of the sun. If the centripetal force does not act, as we saw earlier, the object does not move in circular orbit, it will take the tangential path. So, F is proportional to 1 by d square or 1 by r square as per inverse square rule and we will see how F can be arrived at for this particular sun and planet example. The centripetal force that acts on the planet which keeps it in the circular orbit where the planet is moving with the velocity v. Let us say that force is F and F is equal to we know that F is derived in terms of v and mass mv square by r. And in this case, m is the mass of the planet and which is a constant. So, f is proportional to v square by r. Let us take it as equation number 1. Now, we know when an object is moving in circular motion, velocity is 2 pi r by t, where 2 pi r is the circumference of the path that the planet takes and t is the period to complete one revolution which is 2 pi r distance. Hence we say from this above equation v is proportional to r by t where 2 pi is constant because in the figure the distance between the two objects is small r. If you square we get v square is proportional to r square by t square. And if you multiply and divide the same on the right hand side with r, 
v square is proportional to 1 by r and why we will call this v square proportional to 1 by r as the second equation and newton used kepler's third law wherein r cube by t square is a constant putting 2 in 1 where 1 is f is proportional to v square by r so instead of v square you put 1 by r so which is proportional to 1 by r into 1 by r which is proportional to 1 by r square so we say that gravitational force is proportional to 1 by r square so this has been derived by using the Kepler's third law and a mathematical convenience of squaring and multiplying on either sides to arrive at Newton's inverse square rule. The important factor here is v square is proportional to r cube by t square and where r cube by t square is a constant that comes from the Kepler's third law. And therefore, we arrived at v square proportional to 1 by r and by applying this in the force equation, we arrive at the Newton's inverse square rule. So, we say gravitational force as given by universal law of gravitation that gravitational force is proportional to 1 by r square where r is the distance between the two objects and this can be used on any two objects universally it is applied that is the reason newton's universal law of gravitation is called universal because that law applies to all the objects in the universe including the planets in the planetary system